So we're going to put multiple concepts together in one problem. Uh, I'm going to have you pause throughout and I really want you to see if you can solve this uh, as we go um, before I do. So let's imagine that we have a, a parallel plate here and with this parallel plate we're going to go ahead and put a little hole right here. We're going to charge this up Let's say that, um, let's use uh, 100 volts. Okay, we're going to charge this up. So these are going to take on negative charge. This side's going to take on a positive charge. They're going to throw an electron right there. Okay, hopefully you can see that this electron is going to begin to accelerate through and um, speed up. And it's, it's going to make its way through the plates here. So if you could, can you go ahead and calculate the velocity of that electron when it reaches the um, other side of the plate? Okay, so we're going to say we have some potential energy right here, UE, we have some, that UE is going to turn into kinetic energy over here. So in other words, our UE is going to turn into kinetic. Okay, equation for QE, that's Q times the change in potential energy, potential times one half M times V squared. So we're going to go ahead and solve for V, that's going to be 2Q delta V, make sure you know this is big V, right? Electric potential, this is little v for velocity, divided by M square root. Okay, go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Remember Q is, maybe we'll write this down to remind ourselves, 1.6 10 to the negative 19. The mass of an electron is 1.67 10, nope, that's a proton. 9.11 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. So go ahead and plug that in, see what you get. I'll do it myself. And I get a velocity of 1.38, nope, that's wrong, 5.93 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So go ahead and verify that you get what I get. Um, but anyway, that's going to be the speed of that electron. All right, let's imagine we take some more parallel plates. We're going to let this keep moving. So this electron has a velocity this way, right? We're going to take some other parallel plates and we're going to arrange them this way this time. Okay, we're going to go ahead and charge these up as well. Uh, let's just use 10 volts this time. Okay, so this can take on negative charge, this can take on a positive charge right here. Let's space these out, say five centimeters. So the first thing I would like you to do is to see if you can sketch the path of the electron. So again, push pause, go ahead and see if you can calculate that out, or not calculate, just sketch what it's gonna do. All right, so hopefully you noticed as this electron enters the field, there's going to be a force pushing it this way. So initially it has a velocity, say horizontal, there's going to be a force pushing it this way. So it's going to start to move down a little bit. That force is still pushing this way. It's going to move down a little bit more and that force is still pushing it this way. The force is constant throughout, um, but the direction of this velocity is going to change. So the path this is going to take would look something like this. This is going to take on a parabolic path. In fact, if you notice, this looks exactly like if I were to say jump off a cliff, I would take this exact same parabolic path where instead of the force of electric static electricity pushing me this way, the force would be gravity, right? And it would take that exact same path. In fact, what if I asked you, what is the vertical displacement dy this, this electron would take? Could you do that? So I'll give you a few minutes to see if you can set this up. You, I'll give you a hint, you are gonna use your 2D kinematics and solve this in the exact same way that we would solve something jumping off a cliff. So take push pause, see if you can solve this on your own. All 
All right, so let's set this one up. Let me get a little bit more paper here. Let's throw this up here. Here we go. So let's imagine, let's see our X's and Y's here. So we can see our V initial is what we just solved earlier, right? So we got 5.93, 10 to the six. This is in the X direction here. Uh, our acceleration is gonna be zero. There's nothing accelerating us horizontally, right? It's just a vertical acceleration. Uh, my DX, actually I never gave you a DX, so I guess you couldn't have solved that last problem. Oh well. Well, here's the DX. We're gonna say our DX is say 10 centimeters. So now why don't you pause and see if you can solve this problem. So I'm gonna finish this up on the Y side. Our V initial is gonna be zero. Our acceleration, well, we do need to calculate this. So it is possible to calculate. I'm gonna leave it blank for now. Hopefully you notice what we're really gonna do is we're gonna solve for the time here. And then we know that time is the same over here. And then once we get the acceleration, we should be able to find our dy. Okay, so let's solve for the time. Go ahead and do that. Just use some kinematics here. I'll do it over here on the side. So I'm getting a time of 1.69 times 10 to the negative eight seconds. Notice how small it is. This does should make sense because look how fast this electron's moving. It's just we're looking for how long it takes it to move 10 centimeters, right? So it's going to be a very short period of time. So remember, this time is going to be the same as over here. All right, let's calculate the acceleration. If you haven't done that already, why don't you push pause, see if you can solve the acceleration on your own. So as you see from here, we do have a force pushing down. And as usual, we're just going to use our F equals MA. In this case, our force comes from this electric field. So we can write this as F equals EQ equals MA. Now, I didn't give you the electric field, but I did give you the voltage, right? Or the electric potential across the plates, which we said was 10 volts right here. So remember, the electric field is equal to this potential difference delta V divided by the distance between those plates. Okay, so we can write this as uh, V over D, delta V over D times Q equals MA, or A is gonna be VQ over MD. All right, why don't you go ahead and plug in the values and solve for A. getting an acceleration of 3.5 times 10 to the 13th. Again, notice that we can ignore gravity again because this acceleration is so much larger than um, the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so there you go. There's our acceleration here. We now know our time. Go ahead and do a little bit of kinematics. I'm pretty sure you can do that on your own, so I'll leave that up to you. You should get a dy of about 5 millimeters, 0 0.005 meters, or about 5 millimeters. So that displacement, this displacement right here, this dy, we started in the middle and we moved about a half of a centimeter down this way. Okay? By the way, notice what we could do. If we could change this voltage, if we can increase this voltage, for example, we can cause this to be displaced even more. Or if we reverse the voltage and made these this positive, this negative, we can cause this to move up. In fact, we can control the path of this simply by adjusting our voltage over here. And in fact, if you have an old TV in your house, you might, these are called cathode ray tubes, if you happen to have one of these old TVs that have a really deep back here, essentially what these have is they have a couple parallel plates right here. We accelerate some electrons this way, 
We have another parallel plate here, and we can now control the path of that electron. And we can make little points of light on your screen. And if you had another parallel plate this way, okay, above my desk and below my desk, you could also control it three dimen two dimensionally. In fact, that's what happens. You produce little points of light on your screen and you go across and across and across and across and these are the pixels that you'd see on your TV screen. And it does it fast, okay? In fact, it goes all the way down, across and down about 60 times every second or 60 hertz.